Hello there and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornette with Kent Myers. We're here each week and we talk about interesting subjects and meet interesting guests. And today we're going to meet a couple of interesting people. We are indeed. We're going to do something we haven't done before and that's have a show on a district judge race that will be voted on on November 7th. Uh, the district judge races are a little different than the typical uh, races for governor, lieutenant governor, in the sense that the uh, candidates are somewhat hamstrung on what they can do. They have to be very careful about how they uh, uh, talk about what they might do later uh, if elected as a judge, mm -hmm. because that certainly can cause them problems in serving after they might get elected. Uh, so I think it'll be an interesting show. It will tell us a little bit more about how these races are run. Now, some judges are just retained, and some judges actually have two people running against each other. Yes. At some point in this show, are we going to explain to me why that why that's the case? Yes. Okay. Well, At then, some point. Then we'll all learn something. It's The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We'll be right back. Energy. Here's a few of our favorite hornets. Alexis likes reading. Sam enjoys history. Alec loves math. Chesapeake is proud to support both the Oklahoma City NBA Hornets and the Young Hornets at Horace Mann Elementary, where over 150 Chesapeake employees mentor to children each week. The students gain a lot from the experience, but not as much as we do. Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. I'm Dave Bialis, coming up this month on Generally Speaking. She's the first lady of Oklahoma basketball. Sherry Cole sits down with us this month. We'll talk about the upcoming season, her aspirations, and the pursuit of a national championship. You know how it is with anything that you're passionate about. You feel it. You can stay up all night working on it. You're not tired the next day. That's a pretty good sign that it's probably the thing that you should do. That's Generally Speaking, found only on the Cox Channel. One in four women will be a victim of domestic or sexual violence in their lifetime. That's too many. That's why we want you to know that if you or someone you know is suffering at the hands of an abuser, there is help. Call the Oklahoma Safe Line at 1-800-522-SAFE for access to state and local resources that can truly make a difference. Call anonymously, call toll free, call today because domestic violence is not a game. It's, it's life, life or, or death. death. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce our first guest. We are very pleased today to welcome to the set of The Verdict in this segment of the show, the Honorable uh, Vicki Robertson, current district judge holder in Office 7, uh, District 7 in Oklahoma County. Uh, judge uh, Robertson is a graduate of the University of Oklahoma with honors, uh, and she uh, got uh, awarded Phi Beta Kappa status when she was there. Uh, she was a law graduate at Oklahoma City University. She taught school at my old alma mater, uh, Northwest Classen, uh, much after I had graduated. Uh, she was in private law practice for a number of years, uh, has been on the uh, bench now for 10 years, seven years as an elected district judge. And uh, she is a president-elect of the Oklahoma Judicial Conference. She's a past president of the Oklahoma County Bar Show, uh, Association. We're sure pleased you're here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me here today. Hey, Judge, what are the essential qualifications as you see it for a person that uh, holds the office you're seeking? Uh, first of all, let me apologize for my voice here today. I have a combination of fall allergies and football. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think we could call it the three C's and a T. And that would be character, competence, commitment, and temperament. Uh, obviously, a judge has to have uh, extremely good character, a person of integrity, judicial ethics, a financially responsible individual showing that they have the self-discipline to monitor their own affairs, competence, knowledge of the law, having experience in the law. I think there's sometimes a misconception that trial judges make law. We do not make law. Appellate judges make law. 
we follow a system that in Latin is called stare decisis, that is, the thing has been decided. We must follow the statutes and the existing case law. Third C is commitment, um, being diligent in, in doing your job, being prompt, punctual, uh, doing everything that's required of you to be hardworking. And finally, the more nebulous category is that of judicial temperament. There are a lot of very good lawyers out there who probably wouldn't make very good judges. I think Kent and I probably know uh, some of them. Just like uh, when I taught school, there might be a lot of people that were very good in mathematics but might not be able to teach mathematics. I think it, uh, it takes a combination of those two abilities uh, to be a good judge. Mick uh, mentioned in the opening segment that in Oklahoma we have a, a system of uh, electing sub-judges, retaining some judges. Of course, uh, at the trial court level only do we have races which are contested by hmm. candidate A versus candidate B. At the appellate level, uh, we have uh, where the appellate judges just basically run on their own record and should we retain hmm. them or not retain them. So uh, Judge Robertson in her uh, race is running against uh, Mr. Crawley, who will be our next guest in the next segment. But what do you think about this system as a sitting judge of uh, electing some uh, trial judges, particularly in the larger counties? It's been a source of great contention in the state. Uh, we function on what, for one of a better term, we call the modified Missouri plan. That is, as you indicated, appellate judges are on a retention ballot, and there will be a large number of judges on a retention ballot that when people go in to vote, most of them will probably say, I don't know anything about these individuals because there's simply not a great deal of publicity about it. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit more publicity about a trial judge uh, because we do have some support and probably will have some TV time as well, so uh, the name gets out there. Uh, I think one of the primary problems with election of judges, I think it should be something more than somebody files for office and pays $200. I do think there should be some type of vetting process um, since I initially applied and went through that process, um, I have been investigated by the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. They investigate you and determine if you've you know, had any problems in past employment, financial irresponsibility and the like, and go through all that process with the Judicial Nominating Committee. Uh, obviously in larger counties, and this is, by the way, um, this race is the only countywide district judge race. There is an associate district judge race involving Judge Nan Patton. But this is the only countywide district judge Your race. race. Yes, the District 7, Office 7. There are some other races, but they are, they are in specific districts. Um, but I, I do think we need to have in larger counties maybe some possibility of some type of retention ballot as well. I will say, even though I am a sitting judge, I'm not in favor of lifetime appointments for state trial judges. Um, I do think uh, that the public as a whole should speak on judges, but I think uh, even the ones who uh, are interested, uh, I think, do not really enjoy the contested races. What are the problems that you face mm -hmm. in, in, in your position? I can sum my docket up in one word, volume. I do a civil docket, and uh, a civil docket is anything basically that isn't criminal, juvenile, juvenile, or domestic. And it runs the gamut of cases from simple auto accidents to extremely complex oil and gas litigation. Uh, the number of cases being filed in federal court is going down. The number of cases being filed in Oklahoma County, for example, is going up. For the last two years, I've kept a diary of everything I've done while on the bench. Um, and I do need to look at my notes here a second, but in 2005, over 10,000 civil cases were filed in Oklahoma County. Hmm. That's about 1,500 per judge. There's seven of us that do the civil docket. That's about six per day. We set 2,700 separate items on our docket for the course of the year. I think it will probably su surprise the public to know um, most of our docket really isn't doing jury trials. It is reading. It is reading and it is more reading. And to call the motions I hear briefs is a misnomer uh, because I read <laughs> briefs that are this tall. Uh, in fact, I've already filled up one entire waste paper container of briefs. By the way, it was after I read them, not before. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just a huge volume of docket. These are not uh, the type of lawsuits that make the news typically, but they're very important to the litigants that appear in front of us. They primarily involve uh, money, uh, is the majority of them, and uh, I'm proud to say we've been able to reduce the docket significantly with uh, some innovative things we've done. For example, some of the judges and I are being settlement judges for each other to try to resolve cases short of a week-long jury trial mm -hmm. uh, so that the citizens of Oklahoma County, when they come down for jury service, will be sitting on 
uh, cases that were simply unable to be resolved. Okay. Judge, I know as a sitting judge you have to be careful about this, but in just a few, uh, about the minute we have remaining, tell the viewers why they ought to vote for you. We're going to ask your opponent the very same question in a few minutes. Why should they vote for you to re uh, keep you in District 7, Office 7? Because of the same uh, factors I pointed out earlier, the character, competence, uh, commitment, and temperament. Um, the lawyers in Oklahoma County were recently polled. 93% uh, of those who knew me said I was um, qualified or well qualified, in essence a 93% approval rating, whereas my opponent, 61%, said that he was not qualified. Uh, you've gone over some of my credentials that I won't repeat here. Um, I think there's more to being a lawyer and a judge than just showing up for work and taking a paycheck, and that's being of service to the community. I've been a lawyer for 27 years. I've been a judge for 10 years. I teach uh, continuing legal education. I, I'm a guest lecturer at the Oklahoma City University School of Law. Um, I'm a much more patient person than I thought I would be. <laughs> I've always said if you can teach geometry to sophomores, you can do about anything in life. Um, and when I was a teacher, the students said I was fair and firm, and I think the majority of the bar would say the same thing about me now. All right. Judge, thank you for coming on The Verdict. Thank, thank you. you so much. Judge Vicki Robertson, mm -hmm. we'll be right back mm -hmm. with more of The Verdict right after this. That's a fast eight. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 2-3-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Oh, hi. I know you guys said I'd save with Cox Digital Telephone. Well, my bill came and... Could this be right? You may be surprised how much you save with Cox Digital Telephone. That's why over a million and a half people have switched. So this really is a total. Lovely. Because I think I found a good use for the savings. With Cox, there's no waiting for the other shoe to drop. The only surprise is there's no surprise at all. Ed is due. There you go. Cox Communications está buscando empleados entusiásticos y motivados. Disfruta de nuestros beneficios, pago competitivo, grandes ventajas y oportunidades para el adelanto. Si desea hacer una diferencia, tenemos un lugar para usted aquí con Cox Communications. Visítanos en el internet o llame para ver qué oportunidades tenemos para usted aquí en Cox. Él es tú. Cox Communications está orgulloso de ofrecer igualdad de empleos. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and Kent's going to introduce our next guest. We are very pleased also to have Pat Crawley with us, an assistant district attorney, and he is running against Judge Robertson for Office 7, District 7, Oklahoma County District Judge Race. Uh, Pat uh, did his undergraduate work at the University of Central Oklahoma, his law work at the University of Oklahoma College of Law. Has an interesting background in that he was a former police officer, the first undercover police officer that Midwest City ever hired. He was a police officer for a number of years. 
Uh, he was in private practice uh, for a number of years. He has been a former uh, assistant attorney general at the Oklahoma Attorney General's office uh, and is now currently an assistant district attorney in West Lane's office here in Oklahoma County and is a candidate for District 7, Office 7 District Judge. Pat, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity to uh, appear with you, and I'm, I'm just pleased as I can be to be here. What are the essential qualifications to being a good district judge as you see it? Uh, the essential qualifications for a district judge is, first of all, a judge has to be fair-minded. And by fair-minded, I mean that he has to have a, sen a fundamental sense of fairness. Uh, and I believe that's only learned through life experiences where they can, uh, if you have enough life experiences, you will witness the full spectrum of outcomes from the very fair to the very unfair. Uh, so I believe that's, first of all, a, a judge has to have that fundamental sense of fairness. Uh, second, I think a, a judge has to have a broad base of knowledge in the law. Uh, but a judge, it's critical that a judge have a broad base of knowledge in both civil law and the criminal law. Uh, and of course, with my background, I've, uh, it, most people think at first blush, well, I'm, I'm just an expert in criminal law uh, because I've dealt with criminal law so long, worked for the Court of Criminal Appeals and the Attorney General's Office, but uh, really in the Attorney General's Office, uh, there was a whole myriad of uh, civil law issues that arose. Uh, and it was uh, my representation of the Chief Medical Examiner's Office as a Attorney General that uh, got me involved with the prosecution of Timothy McVeigh in the Oklahoma City bombing case, which involved issues that weren't really criminal, uh, although it was a criminal prosecution. There, they had a base more in civil law. Uh, and the third most essential qualification, I believe, for a judge is the ability to critically think and what I mean by that, you've got to be able to read and understand the law because no one expects a judge to know all of the law in both the civil and the criminal arenas. Uh, I don't even expect a judge necessarily to know as much law as I do, but I think the people are entitled to have a judge who can read the law as it applies to the particular case in front of them and recognize whether it applies or it doesn't. Well, let me ask you, uh, Pat, changing the subject just a little bit. We in, in Oklahoma have this kind of split system where the district judges are elected by the people, appellate judges are just on a retention ballot. Uh, what do you think about our Oklahoma system of electing the district judges at the, at the, the trial level uh, across the state? Should we make a, any distinction between larger counties and smaller counties or what do you think about this election system? You know, that's a great question, Ken. And uh, uh, when you look at uh, an election process for, a, uh, for judges, uh, it seems a bit unseemly for a judge to run a campaign because to run an effective campaign, uh, you have to have money and you have to get some financial support uh, to pay for the signs, uh, media, and television is really quite pricey. Except this show. Except this show, which <laughs> once again, I thank you because this is probably going to be the only television exposure I have because I don't have, I, I'm not part of what, what uh, is sometimes called the good old boy system. I don't have big law firms uh, behind me. I don't have uh, uh, any kind of big lawyer associations that are uh, given me money. In fact, I don't accept money from uh, those kinds of associations. I think that it's, uh, uh, there's, it's too much of an opportunity to uh, be influenced when you have money coming in like that. Now, I, I know my, my opponent, Miss Vicki Robertson, who was just on here, I, I know she's going to uh, have an extensive TV campaign, but you won't, I know it'd be very unlikely to see me 
beyond uh, this show because I just don't I, I just don't take money from those kinds of what are the major problems faced by district judges as you see it uh, the number one problem I believe facing the district judges especially in Oklahoma County is the crushing caseload it's just an overwhelming number of cases that uh, are filed in Oklahoma County. Civil and criminal, there's almost 10,000 criminal cases, felony cases, filed every year uh, in Oklahoma County. Uh, so the, the greatest challenge is the ability to clear the dockets of all these cases and get them either tried or resolved in, in some way or another. And, uh, uh, and I, I think that the uh, challenge of a judge, sitting judges, to avoid getting themselves into the lure of the money from the good old boy system uh, is also a significant challenge uh, to the character of any judge. We have just about a minute left. Uh, why don't you just tell our viewers kind of as your last words, your closing argument, if you will, why should they vote for Pat Crowley for district judge? And that's a fair question. I'm going to answer it as honestly as I can. Uh, first of all, I'm a worker. Uh, anyone that works with me, uh, my colleagues at the district attorney's office, my former colleagues at the attorney general's office will tell you, I work all day, every day. Uh, I'm usually at my desk during the lunch hour. I bring my lunch in a sack from the house. Uh, and that's all I, 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 whatever it takes to get the task done. I work weekends, holidays, nights, whatever it takes. Now in contrast, my opponent, Miss Vicki Robertson, according to the official trial reports for the year 2005, was in jury trial a total of six days for the entire year. And others have dubbed her now around the courthouse as six day Vicki. And at the same time, we had over 200 criminal cases in 2005. You got about five or 10 seconds. That did not get tried in 2005. We're gonna have to wrap it up there. Pat, thank you for coming on The Verdict. Thank, yes, thank sir. you, Pat. Yeah. Appreciate you coming. I appreciate the opportunity. Kent, I'll have a final word when we get back. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. I'm Chris Paul. And I'm Dave Lyell to some of our friends from the Boys and Girls Clubs in Oklahoma. Growing up is tough. Everyone needs a fun and safe place to learn and grow. Boys and Girls Clubs offer programs that instill a sense of pride, purpose, and belonging. Club kids have grown up to become movie stars and, yes, even basketball legends. We hope you'll join Cox, Oklahoma in supporting the Boys and Girls Clubs. Get involved with your local club today because it truly is... The Boys and Place for Kids! Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. 
Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers wrapping up a show, and we have a guest in this final A segment. special guest, an unusual event. Donna Bell, the marketing director of Edmund Family Counseling, is with us to talk to us about the official 2007 Centennial Cookbook as designated by the Centennial Commission and put out by Edmund Family Counseling. Go ahead, Donna. Tell us about it. Tell us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, we've got over 700 recipes in here. Wow. And look at it. Go ahead and talk about it while I look. There are eight different categories, um, 14 pages of Oklahoma history. Um, there's just a variety of recipes that came from across Oklahoma, mm -hmm. from businesses, television celebrities, and just moms and grandmas and you know relatives. Well, there's Governor Henry, uh, President Ronald Reagan, and our own Honorable Mick Cornett, whose <laughs> recipe is the first one in the book, That's by right. the way. Uh, now, Edmund Family Counseling is selling this cookbook as the official Centennial Cookbook. Uh, where do the proceeds go? The proceeds go to Edmund Family Counseling. It helps us provide services to families, individuals, groups that um, you know, need counseling either in marriage, substance abuse, uh, sexual abuse. Um, we have a wide range, anger management, and we give services to families that are seven years old and older. About $22? Exactly. About $22. $20, $20 <laughs> plus tax. Okay. Let's go to your website, and uh, this will show people how they can get more information on the cookbook. It is edmundfamilycounseling.org, and uh, of course all of your other services would be available at that website too. Absolutely. We sure appreciate having you on. Also for Thank our you. viewers, if uh, you have an idea for a show that you'd like to see down the line, then go to us on The Verdict, theverdict.tv. Kent? Well, we want to take this minute, there are 30 seconds, to welcome a new sponsor, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma. We're really pleased that uh, they have joined us, and uh, we're, we're glad that you joined us today. Absolutely. Glad to have you with us. Hope you enjoyed this show. We'll be back next time with another idea about what's going on in Oklahoma. For, Mick, for Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.